Hi, dear students. Let's continue doing uh, some exercises uh, uh, about redox reactions. H2S plus HNO3. Okay, here we have hydrogen sulfide reacting with nitric acid, giving rise to sulfur water and nitrogen monoxide. Okay, as uh, we already know, uh, we have to set the oxidation numbers of all the elements contained in the, in the compounds of the reaction, and after we can recognize Who's the, who's the element that undergo, undergoes an uh, oxidation, and who's the element undergoing a, a reduction, of course. Here, we have hydrogen. We know that hydrogen takes plus one as oxidation number. However, when it bonds with known metals, here, sulfur, of course, is equals to minus two, here oxygen minus two plus one, and nitrogen inside the nitric acid is equals to plus five. Three multiplying minus two is equal to minus six plus one, plus five is equals to plus six. So uh, the, sum, the sum is equal to zero, of course, here. Sulfur stands alone, so uh, its uh, oxidation number is equal to zero here. Minus two plus one minus two plus two. Okay, so taking a look to uh, the reaction, we, we, can, uh, we can recognize that the sulfur is uh, oxidized because it's um, oxidation number uh, from minus two becomes zero. So, and uh, contestually, the uh, nitrogen uh, is the, uh, the element, the reduced element, because its oxidation number um, from plus five becomes plus two. So I can write the half reactions, the incom incomplete half reactions, uh, in this way. Uh, nitrogen plus five, taking three electrons, becomes a nitrogen in the plus two oxidation state. Um, I would like to remind you that when we uh, consider the electrons here in the, in the alpha reactions, uh, we consider this electron uh, ever regarding uh, the single atom, okay? Uh, okay. Here we have sulfur minus two, that becomes a sulfur, zero, plus two electrons. This is the red, the reduction, and this is the half reaction of oxidation. We have to, now we have to balance the electronic transferring between the two uh, reactions, the two half reactions, and uh, we can do this using the cross product. So we can multiply the first reaction with by two, and the second by three obtaining two nitrogen plus five plus seven electrons equals two, two nitrogen plus one. And here we have three sulfur minus two, that gives three sulfur zero plus seven 
six electrons. So now we have balanced the two reactions, the electronic transferring between them, and we can uh, go back to uh, the whole reaction, inserting these uh, stoichiometric coefficients uh, we found. So I have to multiply by three the hydrogen sulfide plus uh, two molecules of nitric acids, giving rise to two, no, three, three atoms of sulfur plus the water. It's, it's still undefined, plus uh, two molecule of nitrogen monoxide. Okay, so the last step uh, consi consists, at this point the last step uh, consists of all, uh, only of the, with the, uh, the, the mass balancing, the, the balancing of the water. That is the, the only compound uh, still unknown, still undefined. Uh, in the in its uh, coefficient. So here, in the left side of the reaction, I can count three multiplying two, six plus two, eight atoms of hydrogen. So coming here, I can put four in front of the the water, obtaining eight atoms of hydrogen. Now, uh, the, the reaction is balanced. We only have to check the oxygen if it works. Here we have three multiplying to six atoms of oxygen. Here we have four plus two, six atoms of oxygen. So the reaction is correct. Okay. Now I would like to, to do some calculation, some stoichiometric calculation on this uh, uh, reaction. So I can, I can write you um, a text for the calculation. So based on this reaction, calculate, calculate how many grams of sulfur are produced are produced when 10 grams of nitric acid are used and how and how many grams of hydrogen oh, hydrogen sulfide are needed okay it's enough. Perfect. So I can I can erase it here. So I can do our calculation. Perfect. 
calculate how many grams of sulfur are produced when 10 grams of nitric acid are used. So, um, the entry parameter we have for this calculation is the mass of the nitric acid equals to 10 grams. Perfect. So, uh, as you probably know, in a stoichiometric calculation, we don't, we never use mass directly. We, we, need to, uh, we need to calculate the moles, and after we can do calculation on the stoichiometric, uh, on the stoichiometry of the, of the reaction. So, without thinking about, <clears throat> we go to calculate the, the moles of the nitric acid, that are equals to 10 divided the molar mass of the nitric acid. So, uh, uh, the molar mass of nitric acid, I have wrote here, uh, are equals to 73, uh, six, uh, 63.02, uh, and uh, uh, the unit uh, of measurements are grams divided grams per mole. So we obtain 0 0.159 moles. Okay. Now, what we have to do? We have only to consider the stoichiometric ratios that contains the, uh, the compounds we are interested to, to calculate. So, uh, in the first question, we have to calculate how many grams of sulfur. Okay. Of, uh, of sulfur. Perfect. So, we can consider the model of sulfur that, that is the unknown parameter, the still unknown parameters, divided by the moles of the known parameter, that are the moles of the nitric acid. And this ratio, called um, stoichiometric ratio, is equal to, I go to the, to the reaction and uh, considering the coefficient, the stoichiometric coefficients of the element uh, involved in the ratio. So here we have sulfur, the quantity I want to calculate and uh, its coefficient is equal to three. So I can put three in the same position uh, in which the sulfur, uh, uh, in which I have uh, set the sulfur considering this ratio. Uh, consider the ratio, the inverse ratio is equal, uh, there's no difference uh, about what we, we can calculate. Um, it's my habit to put the unknown parameter as a numerator of the ratio, only because it's, it's simple to, to make it explicit, okay? So, the, this is two, okay? So, in this way we can obtain that the moles of sulfur I need to calculate are equals to three half of the mole of the nitric acid, equal. So I can substitute these numbers, three half of 0 0.159 equals to, I did this calculation before, 0 
Whoa. Okay. So now it's very simple uh, obtaining the obtaining of the grams of the mass of the sulfur because uh, I only have to to multiply uh, the moles I I have found uh, with the stoichiometry uh, of the reaction by the molar mass of the sulfur and the molar mass of the uh, of the sulfur I can find it uh, on the periodic table of course. <laughs> So the mass of sulfur produced are equals to are equal to product of the molar mass with the moles equals to the molar mass of the sulfur uh, is thirty two point zero six five as I remember well. Multiplying 0 0.238 equals this multiplication is equals to 7.63 grams. So now we can we can answer to the question. If we use 10 grams of nitric acid in this uh, reaction, we can obtain 7.63 grams of sulfur. This calculation uh, can, uh, can, be, can be done uh, for all the, the, the compounds uh, participated in, uh, in the reaction. In this, uh, mm, on this point of view, we can we can say that uh, uh, a balanced reaction is a sort of uh, um, uh, one uh, one uh, freedom degree uh, system, a system with uh, one uh, degree of freedom. What does it mean? That I can choose really only the quantity uh, of one element that is participating in the reaction the quantities of the other one uh, of the other elements are uh, automatically defined by this imposition uh, because uh, the 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 stoichiometric ratios that links all the elements, all the compounds of the reaction. So I can choose freely only one, uh, the, the quantities of one of this compound. The other will be, uh, will be automatically defined. OK, the second question is how many grams of hydrogen sulfide are needed. Okay, are needed as a, a reactant, of course. Um, in many cases, in the in the lab, we need to uh, we need to know uh, what are the the quantities of the reactants to give rise to a, a reaction, of course. So uh, here uh, we are considering a, a reaction in its complete form and. Uh, it's the form uh, useful in laboratories uh, to, to calculate, to weigh the, the, the reactants and uh, for giving rise to uh, a well-known reaction. OK, now I can erase. Is that I still the same? Perfect. So now I can consider the stoichiometric ratio uh, regarding uh, the hydrogen sulfide H2S on the uh, known the known parameter. 
the moles of the nitricated equals to, okay, the coefficients, the coefficient of the uh, hydrogen sulfide is three divided by two. So the same thing we had uh, before Okay, this number was uh, zero point two three eight. Okay, but now, of course, to obtain the mass produced, we need to multiply by the molar mass of the hydrogen sulfide. Okay, I have to, to do this calculation because I don't have it on the sheets, on my sheets. So here we have 32.65 plus 2.02. Okay, so here we have 34.08. We can say that uh, using 8.11 uh, one grams of hydrogen sulfide plus 10 grams of nitric acid, we can obtain 7.7 uh, 7 7.63 grams of sulfur. Okay? Okay, let's go on. Exercise. Okay. Okay. Maybe here we have the, the first uh, redox that we, that we see uh, in, uh, in an ionic form. Um, in practice, uh, uh, there is a, uh, there is a uh, sm uh, small things that changes uh, between uh, uh, to the respect uh, of what we we have seen before, but here we have uh, a divalent cation of tin reacting with uh, uh, nitrate uh, anions. The anions derived uh, from the nitric acid and uh, giving rise to a tetravalent uh, cation of tin and uh, nitrogen uh, monoxide gas. Good. When we, we, we have to balance this, this uh, I take the opportunity to, to, explain, to explain you something more. When we have to, to balance uh, a, a, a redox reaction in its ionic form, 
And uh, this is a net ionic form. Uh, we, we have to, to, to do two steps of uh, balancing of the, uh, of the charge in practice. The first balancing is, uh, as, as always, the, uh, the balancing of the electron, electron uh, um, exchanging between uh, the, the, the alpha reactions. So for first, we, uh, we, we balance the, the electronic transferring, OK? But the second step will be the balancing of the overall charge. The overall charge uh, is regarding the, the, the charge that I can, I can count in, the, in, every, in both the, the sides of the reaction. And I have to consider that this charge needs to be uh, conserved, needs to be equals in, from the left side to the second side. But we will see. Now, uh, before I, I start to solve this exercise, I, I would like to, to, to take this opportunity to show you how it is possible to pass from the complete form of uh, a reaction to a, uh, an, an ionic and, and net ionic uh, form. Uh, so I would like to use the, uh, the reaction, the first redox reaction we I think the first is, uh, is I, uh, I have a good memory. Uh, the first uh, redox reaction we solved in the previous lesson. It was after I go to solve this one. But now I would like to show you this thing. OK. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um I think you can check. This is the first, the first uh, redox we solved in the previous lesson, and we solved it. We balanced uh, it um, in in its complete form. This is a complete form. You can see all the formula of the compounds, the whole formula of the compounds. So I can understand that here is a, a, a potassium permanganate that is reacting with hydrogen sulfide and uh, with uh, uh, sulfuric acid, giving rise to uh, uh, potassium sulfate uh, plus uh, manganese sulfate plus sulfur plus water. This is a form, as I said, useful in laboratory to, to weigh the, the, the substances, to weigh the, the, the reactants. Okay, but we can we can transform this uh, this form, uh, thinking that this kind of overreaction occurs uh, usually occurs or ever occurs in aqueous media. I can I can recognize this by this molecule of water here or by the experience. Here we have salt. An acid, an acid, salt, salt, an element, and water. This kind of compound uh, could react one each other uh, practically only in water. So um, this this reaction occurs in an aqueous media. Considering this. We can uh, consider that um, uh, the, the major of the compounds here appearing are electrolytes, are substances um, able to dissociate 
in, uh, in water, giving rise to ions, cations and anions. And we can consider this uh, characteristic. So the first step to, to obtain a, a net ionic form is to uh, dissociate to dissociate the complete reaction. Here we can write, for example, P plus plus Okay, I dissociated. I dissociated the first salt, the potassium permanganate, that uh, dissolved in, uh, in water um, as uh, all the salts, the, the soluble salts, uh, uh, becomes, becomes ions. Uh, in particular, we have the monocation of potassium and the permanganate uh, anions and the charge of these ions. It's, it is not difficult to, to understand because you can check on your periodic table that potassium uh, is a metal um, uh, that holds to the the first column of the periodic table, the, the column of the, the family of the alkali metals. And that metals, as you know, uh, has only one electron to give to someone else. And so uh, they, uh, they, they all uh, ionized, ionized uh, giving rise to monocation. Mono uh, in practice, and 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 so the 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 charge of the anion is derived from the the, the charge of the cation because uh, the sum of the of the two charges uh, has to be zero because the the molecule the, the unit of formula this is not molecule the unit of formula is neutral so I can proceed. Here we have an acid that okay that dissociates in this way, okay, as a good acid uh, it gives in water uh, hydrogen cation, that are the 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 cations uh, uh, from which depends the pH of the water. Uh, plus, two H plus, plus the sulfate anions derived from the sulfuric acids. Here, I can, I can recognize the, the charge of this anion, considering that this anion is bonded to uh, two atoms of hydrogen. Every atom of hydrogen has one positive charge, so I can derive that uh, the sulfate anion has to be minus two as charge. So here we have. Okay, plus another time the sulfate plus manganese. Here, the the, the charge of the manganese. Uh, I can I can recognize the the, the charge of the manganese uh, considering the charge of the sulfate that is minus two. I understand that is minus two, and so the manganese here has to be plus two plus another time the sulfate to minus plus I have to go well I 
I can, I can. Okay. Better in this way. Plus S plus H two O. The water. It's not necessary to dissociate the water, and S is an element and cannot dissociate from water. So now. We are in this situation. This is the ionic form of the reaction. But uh, to obtain the net ionic form, I can notice something. There are, there are uh, several uh, elements that are equals from the reactants to the to the products. In particular, I can recognize that the, cation, the potassium cation is here and is here unchanged. You don't have to consider the, the number in front of the, of the cation because uh, I'm not talking about uh, uh, Subtraction. I don't want to subtract these two, uh, the numbers, the coefficient of these two cations. And um, it's a, a different <coughs> uh, discussion because I'm, I'm considering that ah, the A, the, uh, the reaction is still uh, not. Um, balanced. So here we have undefined numbers. Here we don't have to consider that here we have uh, there's one. No, here there's an undefined coefficient. So this number uh, are as less important as uh, few importance. Um, the most important is considering that the K plus is equal before and after. So what does it mean? That it means that the cation uh, K plus hasn't reacted actually. I can, I can uh, call this cation spectator, ion spectator. In the same uh, condition, it seems we can find these anions, the sulfate, because it remains the same through the reactants to the products. Everything remains equal. Uh, passing to from the reactants to the product, I can tell that is that um, hasn't reacted. In practice, these all are uh, spectators ions. Spectator ions. So spectator because they see uh, other elements reacting. They only see other elements reacting, but they don't participate actually in the reaction. So I can exclude them from the representation of the reaction. These are spectator ions. So, as I said, excluding them to the representation of the reaction, I can obtain the net ionic form. That is the ionic form without the spectator ions.
So here I can write permanganate minus plus. H plus. Um, it's not important the coefficients because the, the reaction uh, is not balanced, and so uh, it's uh, it's not uh, useful to, to to take this two and two and bring it here. Okay. Plus. The sulfur anions. The sulfied anion plus, okay, and stop. Okay, equals to the manganese divalent cation plus sulfur element plus water, okay. This is what, uh, this is what actually happens in the reaction. And uh, this is uh, uh, a short but very uh, powerful representation of the reaction because we, we, we see for real what are the elements that are, uh, that are reacting actually in the, in the, um, uh, in the reaction. Uh, seeing uh, the complete form, uh, we can imagine that all the, all the elements uh, are reacting, but it's not true. These are the elements reacting. So, these are two points, two points of view of the same thing in practice. And we can use the one or the other one as we, um, uh, as we want, when we want, for our needing. Okay. So, I have explained uh, what is uh, this kind of of uh, representation of from what it derives. Um, here it is. Okay. So we can come back to, to solve this, uh, this exercise. Here, it's easy to see that uh, the thin is the, the space, uh, the space, uh, the oxidized space. Uh, because uh, uh, in this case, the number of oxidation of the element is equal to the, to the real charge of the, uh, of an ion, and, and so um, I, I, I can see that uh, the tin pass from uh, plus two to plus four. So I can, I can write the oxidation half reaction in this way. Plus two electrons. Okay, uh, we already know that in the uh, nitrate anions, the nitrogen has uh, five as oxidation number. Uh, why we can, of course, we can do calculation, but uh, we can remember this uh, this this thing by considering uh, the substances we, we have seen before. We have seen nitric acid, and in the nitric acid, nitrogen has plus five. In the nitric acid is present this, this group, 
in this, in this case, these anions. And so nothing is changed when the, um, the nitric acid uh, is dissolved in water and uh, release uh, its positive and negative ions. Uh, in the, inside these ions, nothing is changing in terms of uh, oxidation state. It's a, it's a physical um, process, the, the ionic dissociation of these substances. is a chemi-physical chemi process. But the oxidation state of the element uh, contained in the, uh, in the polycation or the polyaliens uh, doesn't change. Uh, but if I want to do calculation, I can consider that oxygen has minus 2, as always. So 3 multiplying minus 2 equals to minus 6. And in this time, this time we don't have uh, a neutral, neutral uh, uh, formula, but we have an anion. And so the, the algebraic sum of the oxidation number of the elements has to be equal to the charge of the anion and not equal to zero, uh, like uh, a neutral molecule. So in this, in this uh, uh, reasoning in this way, I have to put plus five here. Minus seven plus five, uh, minus six plus five equals to minus one. Mm. Okay. And here, minus two and plus two. So uh, it's clear that it's clear that the nitrogen is reduced during this uh, reaction. Uh, in particular, nitrogen plus five, uh, taking uh, three electrons, uh, produces produce uh, nitrogen plus two, uh, doing the the cross product, we obtain that three S N plus two. Uh, gives 3 Sn plus 4 plus 6 electrons. And here, uh, I can write that 2 n plus 5 plus 6 electrons gives 2 n. Okay, now we have balanced the electronic transferring, and it's good. But it is not enough. As I said, uh, when I consider uh, ionic uh, redox in, a, in an ionic form, uh, the balancing of the charge needs two steps. This is the first. The second step uh, consists of the... Uh, the balancing of the overall charge. But um, let's start to, to, to put this coefficient inside the, the, the reaction so we can go on 3 and 3, and here 2 and 2. OK. Of course, here I I forget to write you the, the text of the exercise. <laughs> okay, the text of the exercise says that balance, I can write here, balance the reaction in, in acidic, Acidic media. This information, uh, it's it's very important, okay? Because 
if you if you try to 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 check if the the reaction is uh, balanced, you can you can easily consider that it is not balanced, and uh, so we can understand that we have to do something more, and uh, the this information now becomes fundamental. This reaction has to uh, and to has to take place in an acidic media. What means? What does it mean? Acid me, acidic media. And acid me, acidic media is, uh, in, uh, in poor words, uh, a water solution in which the concentration of the uh, hydrogen cation, uh, H plus, is higher than the concentration of the uh, hydroxide uh, anions. And so, uh, in practice, uh, as you remember uh, the, the lesson of uh, Professor Panzini about this, uh, this argument, the acid-base uh, reaction, um, you can, you can uh, uh, remember that uh, if the concentration of the H plus in water is higher than the concentration of the hydroxide, uh, hydroxide uh, anions, we, we, we call the solution acid, acidic. And uh, uh, the pH of this, uh, of this solution is uh, lower than 7. We consider uh, neutral the solution in which the pH is equal to 7, acidic, if the pH is lower than 7, and basic if the pH is higher than 7. So here is the case in which the pH has to be lower than 7. But uh, we don't, we don't um, we, we don't have to be interested of the pH in this, in this case, because we need only to consider this these ions, these charges, because now, as I said, we have to uh, balance the overall charge, the overall charges uh, of both the the sides of the uh, of the reaction um, uh, to justify the uh, the conservation of the charge. Look, this means that I have to count. The, um, uh, the wall charges uh, in both sides, and I have to impose that these two charges has to be equals. I rewrite here the, the reaction. So I could be more clear in what I want to do. Plus. Perfect. So, to count the um, uh, the overall charge of the left side, I only have to count the positive and negative charges and uh, make the algebraic sum of them. So here we have three cations, three divalent cations. Three multiplying plus two give, gives plus six. Here we have two negative charges. So plus six minus uh, two plus six minus this two charge gives plus four. So in the left side of the reaction, we have plus four as overall charge. Now, you can go to consider here uh, what are the charges. 
here we have, we only have this cation to give, to give, who gives charges to the, to the right side uh, end. In particular, here we have three multiplying four, 12 plus 12 as overall charge of this side. So now we need to make, to make equals these two charges. But the, uh, the text of the exercise uh, indicates me that I have to use positive charges to do this, to do this thing. And so this uh, uh, makes, uh, makes um, so I, uh, I have to put this, uh, this uh, positive charge in the side where it is necessary. In this case, uh, the only side where I, uh, where I can uh, insert this positive charge is the, the left side of the reaction, because here the overall charge is, is, is less, is plus four, and uh, using a positive charge needs to be equals to plus 12. So 12 may, minus 4 is equal to 8. So I can introduce here plus 8H eight, 8 hydrogen cations. So the overall charge of the left side becomes plus 8 equals plus 12. I have make it equals these two charges. And this is what we have to do uh, anytime, every time I, uh, we, we, we have to solve to balance uh, a cation reaction. Now, the last, the last passage, the last step, is to balance the mass, because I have introduced hydrogen here in the left side, so you have to justify where this hydrogen goes <laughs> and what, what does it form in the, in the right side. Uh, of course, the hydrogen introduced forms water. Water, because it reacts with the oxygen, of course. Uh, and so here I can write water. So every time we introduce uh, H plus in, a, in the left side or in the second, in the, in the right side, uh, um, it's important to point out that uh, I have to introduce H plus if the, uh, the media is acidic, uh, where, where uh, it is necessary, okay? Uh, maybe in uh, other reactions, could be necessary to introduce H plus in the right side of the reaction, okay? And when we introduce this charge, we need to justify uh, the origin or where uh, they, uh, what they become, uh, introducing water molecules in the opposite side in which I have introduced the hydrogen. So if they intro I, I'm constricted to introduce hydrogen in the, in the first side of the, uh, the reaction, I need after to introduce some molecules of water in the second side, in the second member of the reaction. And in particular, I need to introduce four molecules of water because here I, uh, I'm, I was constricted to, I, um, I'm constricted to introduce uh, uh, eight, eight atoms of hydrogen, of course, 
and uh, here we need to have eight atoms of hydrogen. Now we can check the oxygen uh, if it works, and uh, it seems it seems yes. Here we have um, th two multiplying three six uh, atoms of oxygen. Here we have two plus four six. Uh, atoms of oxygen, so I can tell that uh, the reaction is correctly balanced. 